you, you know, we got Map Xander. And yep. we're going to talk about cloud systems, I think. Yep. So, um, you know, I, I love the Beatles music and I'm looking forward to the concerts, but yeah, I'm a technology guy there and, uh, you know, cloud's big. So first of all, Matt, welcome. Thanks, thanks very much. I, I actually have to fly home tonight, so oh. I'm going to be missing uh, Paul McCartney. I was oh. trying to figure out if I could hawk my, uh, my wristband out in, the, out in the parking lot there, but we'll uh, see. Uh, we'll uh, see. Uh, 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 uh. Absolutely. So uh, we were just talking to uh, Jeff Kenyon, uh, you know, two guests ago uh -huh. about, about virtual systems, and now yeah. we have cloud systems. As I yeah. said, um, it, it's sometimes tough to kind of squint through uh, all the different marketing terminologies. So can, can you maybe share for us as to how uh, cloud systems fit with, you know, matrix and virtual and app systems and, and, all, and all these other pieces? Sure, sure. So the, the overall umbrella is something called converged systems, right? And within that, you've got vert system, app system, and cloud system. So cloud system can be thought of this single platform on which to build, deploy, and manage cloud environments, right? Public, private, and hybrid cloud environments. So it's, a, it's kind of unique in the industry in that it has a single approach to all various flavors of cloud, and it's very open and flexible to meet various customer needs. So, so but at its core, we're, we're still talking about a converged infrastructure where I've got compute, network, and storage, correct? That's correct. It's based on converged infrastructure as a foundation element, and then we layer on top and integrate with that cloud service automation software Okay, so, so this is the IMC uh, software, or is this, is this something else? Uh, no, it's something different, actually. Okay. So it's comprised of some capabilities that folks are used to in the marketplace today, like server automation. Okay. Right? So this is, this is really getting to the heart of what it takes to move from just infrastructure automation with right. converged infrastructure all the way up through the application stack for cloud enablement. Uh, okay, so when, when we, we talk to CIOs, uh, you, know, uh, you know, management is definitely, you know, maybe security might be the top of mind issue, but management is really kind of one of the chinks in the armor of cloud. So can you give us a little bit more color as to how HP, what are you doing in-house, what are you doing through partnerships yep. and alliances to really help you know, manage in a new way? Yep, so, so management is, is critical, right? One of the things most CIOs are concerned about is they understand the benefits to, to start transitioning to the cloud, but they're definitely afraid of sort of leaving in islands what exists today in their environment, right? right. So you have to be able to bridge from a management perspective into their traditional IT environment and be able to seamlessly collect that in a hybrid environment which is right. comprised of traditional IT, public domain resources as needed and as appropriate, as well as new private cloud. Right, so so so, so this is a true hybrid cloud environment, so I've got some stuff in my, my internal database, yep. uh, I'm sorry, data center, which is called private yep. cloud, my, my external, typically service provider, I would think, uh, that, that we're doing there, or yeah, other public cloud provider. That's, that's correct. Um, yep. Does it have to be HP product in all of these environments? Uh, no, it doesn't, okay. and that's one of the benefits that HP's bringing to market, is we, we try to build things on an open basis, right? So we're not, we're not locking customers into a certain flavor of hypervisor, we're not locking customers into a certain flavor of OS, and we can even work with heterogeneous infrastructure. Okay, as so, a, as a whole. so you know, the standards for cloud are just starting to you know come out. Yep. Uh, and uh, it, how how are you doing interoperability then between the the, the various environments? So, so you're right. Today, the the idea of bursting out to a public cloud, for example, is very pre-standard. Yes. Right. So what we're what we're doing is working with service providers to create special connectors okay. that allow us to say, if you have a cloud system in your private cloud you can then burst out to a service provider, much like we demonstrated yesterday with Savas, okay. and we'll build that out over time as standards evolve to, to take over that connector great, great. approach. So, so Savas has a great story. Are there any other the service providers that you, you're talking about here that you can share? You know, What, what options are there uh, out there in the so, ecosystem? So I, I won't share any specific names today, but, okay. but rest assured that with our new Cloud Agile provider program, right. That will help formulate the basis of a priority list, and then you can you can fill in the blanks with some of the other names in the industry that we'll obviously be uh, be working with. Okay, so 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 excellent. Service providers, you know, very critical, important, and mm -hmm. we talked about management. Uh, maybe we can touch on security. It's been a real hot sure. button issue, especially with some of the recent outages. Sure. Uh, you know, is there where, where security fit into this? Security, from our standpoint, has to be pervasive throughout a cloud mm -hmm. solution, right? And we really encourage folks to ask some challenging questions. There's a lot of a lot of PowerPoint floating around explaining how everything's done in the cloud now and everything's taken care of from various vendor approaches. Ask the hard questions like, what do I do with my physical and virtual environments from a security perspective, right? Many times applications can be moved to a virtualized environment, but they reside or they rely on a physical instance of a database, right? You have to consider security holistically physical, virtual, application infrastructure, and we're working all that capability in the cloud system. Okay, so so, so we all know if, you, if you've been in the industry, you know, in IT for, for years, technologies come and go, there's the latest fad, you know, cloud and virtualization, big yep. big data's a big one, um, but at the end of the day, it's all about the people. Yep. So the, the role of the, the IT administrators, traditional silos, uh, and uh, you know, HP has, you know, a, a large workforce and, and, and a huge community. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I've liked what I've seen on the Expert One uh, okay. program that HP has, 
and I'm curious how you know HP really sees the role of the you know traditional IT administrators uh, fitting into the role of where cloud plays and what you're doing to help you know educate and train that workforce. Uh, so it's a really good it's a really good point. I actually just left a, a session by uh, FICO, one okay. of our, our customers here, that's explaining to folks how they've successfully deployed a cloud system and. Yeah. They, they went into detail about how they've actually created a new role okay. within their IT organization called the solution administrator, right? Excellent. So it's, it's a combination now of the, the world's blurring between storage, networking, and server to really enable cloud. And HP is working to develop you know, education programs and certification programs alike to help sort of fuel that new workforce, if you will, to take advantage of cloud in the future. Yeah, excellent, good. Um, so, so, so let me see. Uh, for, for, from a cloud standpoint, you know, wh where, where do you feel we are from a maturity standpoint? Uh, you know, are we past the peak of hype? You know, uh, you know, how, how much interest are you seeing from your customers versus how much of this is a, is a push uh, from the vendors? Sure, I, I think there's a, a huge amount of hype, right, and a lot of confusion that goes along with the hype in the marketplace today. I think once you can explain to customers that they may already be on the path to cloud today without realizing it, if they're he highly virtualized environment, right? That's sort of step one to, to get there. And then they could see it as an incremental step, right? And they realize the benefits. I think we're far away from being mature, but there's definitely capabilities available today for you to go do a private cloud, start small, grow tall, you know, take a workload that you know will be optimal for a cloud environment, right. prove success within your organization with that, and then grow from there. Great, are, are there any you know, work, workloads or specific applications that you'd recommend starting with? So certainly test and dev yeah. lends itself extremely well to cloud, right? It's something that most people have in their environments that they're wrestling with. It oftentimes tends to be a, a very rushed service request from a line of business to go do that. So that's a natural place to start where you can carve something off, start a cloud, and, and show success. Yeah, it, it reminds me a lot of where we were with uh, server virtualization you know, many years ago. Start yes. and test dev, move up the stack to yep. higher level yep. environments, and you know where Amazon production. started out is companies that I didn't have to build that infrastructure. So I guess the, the, the question I have is, you know, Amazon, anybody can take a credit card and kind of just go uh -huh. buy it. Um, so, you know, how is HP making sure, it, you know, transitioning to a financial model that, that's more flexible to be able to deploy cloud? So, so what we want to do is arm our customers with the, the flexibility to have their cake and eat it too, right? So okay. if, you, if, you build a, if you build a cloud system, yep. right, you have the on-premise private cloud footprint to take advantage of those workloads that either through compliance or regulatory concerns, you are obligated to keep on-premise, right. right? You cannot send it off. But then, when you need to burst for additional capacity and for workloads that maybe aren't as sensitive and constrained, you have that flexibility to go essentially do the credit card model and burst through through a public domain, right? So that's the that's the way we see the world. We don't see it as an if, but a, but a, a when for hybrid cloud and it's, it's all about transitioning our customers to get there. No, no, I, I definitely agree with you there. It, it's, it's definitely, there's many options. I mean, if, if you look at the interviews we've done here at the show, uh -huh. you know, HP has a very broad portfolio and it's not about one or two solutions, but the, there's many environments and many avenues to be able to get that um, to, to, into your environment. So I, I guess, uh, you know, possibly could you share with us, you, you've been in some of the sessions, you've seen the keynote, mm -hmm. you know, what, what's the coolest technology you've seen here? Well, you know, I, this is probably going to sound very selfish, but yeah. I, I, I was pretty excited to see the bursting okay. capability. I mean, bursting's a, it's an area for, for HP that, well, for the marketplace in general, that's been a, a lot of people talking and not a lot of people doing. Yeah, so, so that was a particular capability. So, I, we I mean, I, I, I'm a networking guy. So, yeah. when I look at cloud bursting, you know, there's a limited amount of bandwidth that I have between here and there, and, yep. it, and it's tough to get data from here to there. So, so why is this different from, you know, some of the reasons why the, you know, uh, you know, XSPs back in the 90s failed. Mm -hmm. So what's different? Why can I really get from here to there and share information? Well, you know, there's, there's a lot of technologies that can limit the effects of, of bandwidth, right? And you have to ask yourself, how is Amazon today so successful uh, by being able to move capabilities off to their, their workloads, right, and do infrastructure as a service? Essentially, when you burst from a private cloud, you're, you're creating a similar linkage to what Amazon has to their customer base today. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has a, a 10 gig pipe out the back, right? right. And, it, and it works quite well with, if the application makes sense for it. Right, uh, and, and I would expect Wayne optimization is pretty crit critical for some of that cloud bursting technology. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a little bit further up the stack, you know, and it's something that we're trying to work into the ecosystem as we move forward. But yes. It's a, so, it's a so, capability. were there any partners you were working with that you can share uh, on the Wayne optimization side, or not? Not specific to bursting today, okay. but you know, HP has relationships with okay. all of the major players there through but, our but, alliance. But partners. Th this is, you know, we saw a demo. So, I mean, this, this is not vaporware. This is not, you know, proof of concept. This is something shipping today. Uh, it's it's scheduled to ship later this year in production. Okay but it's something that we can go in and, and do from a proof of concept standpoint, okay. and we've, we've proven it out with, uh, with Savas. Great. 
So, so Matt, appreciate you sharing with us on Thanks cloud for systems. The uh, glad, glad we can fit you in here. Uh, exciting technologies here. Uh, cloud bursting, which is really one of those uh, you know use cases we've been talking about for cloud for the last couple of years. But real deployments of uh, you know how technology can really transform IT. Yeah, so, that's pretty exciting. Thank stuff. you for joining us here in the cube. Thanks very and much.